What's up, fam? Welcome back to Well That's Good Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, we have a special guest today. I'm super excited. But once again, just want to remind y'all that conference is right around the corner, August 19th and 20th at the Monroe, Louisiana Civic Center, where I grew up and where Christian and I live. We're so excited. We cannot wait to host all of you here. Don't forget to buy your ticket today at LOSisterConference.com and make your plans to get here in person with us. We're so excited. Today we have two incredible guests who I actually got the privilege of meeting years ago when I was on the Winter Jam Tour. Two just absolutely authentic, incredible people who love the Lord but are also insanely talented. We have John and Corey Cooper from Skillet on the podcast. If you don't know about Skillet, you might be living under a rock. I'll tell you a little bit about them. And Skillet is one of the best-selling rock bands of the 21st century. Its breakout single, Monster, remains one of the most streamed rock songs of all time with over 4 billion streams. Y'all, that is insane. Today, nine original tunes earn RIAA recognition in tandem with high-profile syncs by everyone from WWE, Marvel, ESPN, and NFL. Like, that's insane. And they've also sold out arenas in 26 countries and four continents. Like, what? That's amazing. But beyond all that they've done, who they are is incredible. They love the Lord and they do it all as a family. They have two kids. Their oldest is 15 and they have been traveling on the road with him since he was three months old. They are a family who loves the Lord and does it together. And I cannot wait to interview them and get to know more about their life and their heart behind all that they do. They have a new album out called Dominion. Go listen to it today. Without further ado, we'll welcome our guest. John and Corey Cooper. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks, Sadie. Well, likewise, we're uh, proud of you. I don't know if that sounds cheesy, but we're proud of you for everything you've done, you know. Thank you. No, that means a lot, truly. So cool. And I'm so excited. We were just kind of laughing because truly when I sat on y'all's bus years ago, I think I just graduated high school, maybe. And so uh, <laughs> it's crazy that now I'm married and have a baby and we're reconnecting and there's a, a lot of uh, lost time in between there. But reading y'all's intro was just so exciting to see all that God's done through y'all and all that y'all are doing. So well done, my friends. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yes, you were you were just out of high school. It was thrilling to have uh, somebody uh, of that age group willing to stand up for Jesus. Yeah. We need more people. We need more teenagers doing what you are doing now thank and you. standing up, willing to stand on the truth of the Word of God. Be unapologetic about mm -hmm. the faith that has mm -hmm. saved yeah. them from the kingdom of darkness, yeah. brought into His glorious light. We need people to brag about Jesus, and That's you right. are doing that. So we were always proud of you, and we uh, Thank you. don't want to be cheesy, but we are still very, very proud of you. So <laughs> keep doing you. what you're doing. Don't stop. It's so sweet. Well, truly, y'all, it meant so much to me because when I went on that tour, Winter Jam, that was my first tour to ever do, and I remember I was so nervous, like so scared, and um, didn't know what I was doing, didn't even really want to be there, and um, I remember y'all welcomed me to come onto your bus, and y'all were so inviting and so kind, and to be honest, when I first got to Winter Jam, you know, y'all are skillet, skillet goods out there, and there's flaming fire, and it's like the drums are <laughs> spinning, and it's all this intensity, and it's so amazing, and I'm like, y'all are the sweetest people ever. Like, it, it's just, it's so <laughs> cool, because you think, you know, when you see it, it's this intense thing, but y'all are the most kind, welcoming people. It made me feel so welcome on that tour, and so at home, and so I was so grateful. Um, well, we can jump into this podcast, and look, I gotta ask y'all the question I ask everybody who comes on the Will That's Good podcast, and then we can dive into a, a fun conversation. But first, I have to know, what is the best piece of advice that the two of you have ever been given? Ever been given? You go. You're the one with good advice. Best advice have ever been given. Um, Co Corey's the, the, the Proverbs woman. She knows every proverb by heart. What's the best advice, honey? Then you have plenty stored up. <laughs> Let's see. There's, there's too much for me. Uh, let me say uh, Proverbs 1-7, fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. You know, so everything else follows from that perspective. It's good. You know, so I don't know. Hey, I think that's, that's, my that's best a drop-the-mic moment. Needs no more explanation. <laughs> that's just, that is what it is. The so fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I love it. Well, hey, so many people know of y'all. They know what y'all do. Y'all are um, an incredible band that's literally reached the world. I wasn't being... Um, 
silly when I said that. Y'all have toured in several countries and all that stuff, but take us back to how y'all met because y'all are both <laughs> just so such incredible people and doing this so, like super unique thing, but how did the two of y'all come together and start dating? <laughs> all right, I'll tell the story. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Co Corey would prefer me to tell the story. All right, so we've been married now for 25 years. We just celebrated about three months awesome. ago. 25 years, and I don't feel like I'm near old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years of marriage is crazy. Uh, just so people know, we also have two kids. So we raise our kids on the road. My my daughter, Alex, is 19. Mm -hmm. Our son will be 20. No, nope. she'll be I'm, 20. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do math. <laughs> she'll be 20 this year. My son will be 17 any day now. And we raised our kids on the road, so they got to tour with you when you were just Sadie Robertson, yes. the high school, the high school grad. <laughs> and um, but we met. Let's see, this is our 26th year of Skillet, and wow. basically the, the the short version is this: I'm from Memphis, she's from Wisconsin, and we both played in bands. You know, our our, our e e respectively, our each band, and my pastor's family knew Corey's dad who is a pastor it's mm -hmm. kind of kind of a sister church you might say yeah. and so that's so she she was coming down to visit and my pastor kept saying there's this girl Corey coming you're gonna uh, you I want you to get you know meet her he was never thinking we would like each other he just thought it'd be cool because she plays in a band and you play a band I bet you guys could encourage each other and when I told him I said hey, I think I kind of I kind of like I have some feelings for Corey he was like dude she would never, ever go for you in a million years. Awesome. She's smart. She's intellectual. She's deep. And you're John. You're not any of those things. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Well, hey, look at you now, you know? Take you... a look at me now. Come on. Ooh. Whoa, that's good. Whoa, that is good. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. I um, I heard a quote that you said, Corey, and I thought it was so good. It was about singleness. And you said, well, if that's something God has for me, he'll bring along the right person where we can do this together. And otherwise, I'm fine being single. And, you know, so many people these days struggle to say those words, you know. Um, they, they so desperately want a relationship and to get married and I don't blame them when you look around culture and that is what culture flaunts and celebrates is relationships. It, it's really hard to be single these days. And so can you speak to the single ladies out there a little bit and just finding that contentment with who you are and your relationship with God as you wait for that person? So many exciting things coming up. Uh, so many different things from speaking events, podcasts, weddings to attend, all the things. Life is just busy, friends, is it not? And I couldn't be more excited for the things that we get to do. But with all that, you need a little preparation for the things. You know, before I go speak somewhere, it's important to me, obviously, to study and pray and prepare for what God's going to speak. Um, good things take time. And hey, I think it's the same when it comes to our outfits that we're going to wear, right? We got to think about what we're going to wear. We got to plan these things. Uh, who does and love a new fit when you're about to do something fun and that's why I love Stitch Fix because just because you like the stuff doesn't mean you have time to always do it and Stitch Fix really helps you out. I actually have a new box on the way I'm excited about. If you know me you know I love rotating through my favorite pieces and from the last Stitch Fix box I am loving my pajama set still. I mean who doesn't love a cute comfy set of PJs? Um, it doesn't matter if you're going for a girls night, a date night, or even a cozy night in. Stitch Fix has got you covered my friend and it is so easy to get started. All you have to do is take a few minutes to set up your Stitch Fix profile. Just answer a few questions on what you like, love, what you don't, or even how adventurous you want to be with your style. Next, Stitch Fix has an expert stylist ready to go to work just for you. Every single piece will be handpicked based on your preferences, even how you like it to fit and how much you feel comfortable spinning. At Stitch Fix, they understand even with your busy schedule, you want to look and feel your best. So Stitch Fix will send you five pieces to try on right at your home and you can keep what you love and send back what you don't. Shipping returns and exchanges are easy and also free. Hey yo, the best part is there is no subscription required. You can simply try it once or you can set up an automatic delivery. There are no hidden fees ever and that's nice to know. So sign up for Stitch Fix and get the latest style for women, men, and kids too. Sign up today at stitchfix.com slash woe to get $20 off your first purchase. That's stitchfix.com slash woe to get $20 off 
off your first purchase. Limited time offer, so purchase within two days of sign up. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly sympathize with people who are alone. I mean, obviously, God, within God's design for most people, he made man and female, male and female. And he mm-hmm. said it's not good to be alone. So I totally can understand why you would want to. Can I interrupt some... really quick? Yeah. It sounded like you just said for most people, God made them male and female. So I'm just making sure you think for all people, God made them male and female. <laughs> I'm sorry. But for most people, God has a plan for them to be married. Of course. Yes. Thank yes. Good that is what I meant. <laughs> and so, but when you give your life to the Lord, right? When you actually say, here is my life, I want you to take my life and do what you will with it. Hmm. He brings the fulfillment to your life, right? And Mm -hmm. so then his ways become your ways. You don't have rights anymore. His ways are what you are given to in your life. Mm -hmm. And so there are some people that will be single, Mm -hmm. but God determines those things. So for myself, I was like, you know, we have seasons where we are single and then perhaps seasons where you are married. But within all of the seasons, God is your fulfillment. He is your Lord. He is your everything. And he can bring those things to you. If you are looking for a person to bring fulfillment and wholeness to you, you will inevitably just be disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. So for myself, you know, in my young years, I'm like, I know these are years I'm called to be single. So I'm just going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. I don't actually know if he has a husband for me in my future. So but for now, I will live. Everything I have is for the Lord. If he brings someone alongside of me, that's for the betterment of his kingdom. That means I'll be more effective with someone else than I will be single. Yeah. And so I, you know. It's not that you don't have moments where you're lonely, but if you press into God, he can fulfill all of those things in you. He can meet you, right? Yeah. He's our comfort. He's our sustainer. He, the Bible says he is all of these things. But when you live in your life, sometimes you don't necessarily know the reality of that. Yeah. But we are to press into that truth because yeah. he will he will fill those places for you and you will find greater fulfillment in that walk with him than anywhere else. That's good. Come on, preach that. That's a good word. I love that. Um, so for y'all, I love that you, you said that you've had your kids on the road since they were young. And we kind of already are like that with our daughter, Honey. She's she's on the go with this. We just got back from uh, Norway and Denmark, and, and she was right there with us. And it's just amazing um, to travel with her and to see that. But I, I think so many people, and even when I was in Norway, um, someone said to me, wow, it's so amazing that, you know, you got married and you have a baby and you're still doing stuff. And um, I was <laughs> like, yeah. And they said so many people in that culture, and, and I think here too, think, you know, once you get married and once you have a baby, then you kind of, you either choose like to go with your career or you choose a family, you know, it's not like you can do both. And there's such a, such a beautiful thing to get to do both. And, you know, uh, obviously there are sacrifices you have to make and we have a nanny and we have, we have help and different things like that. Um, but it is a beautiful thing to do both for y'all. Can you speak a little bit into that? Like, you know, did y'all have a moment at the beginning where it was like, oh, if we have a family, we're going to have to stop? Or did you always know, you know, (laughs) this is kind of like our family's calling together? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, I'll I'll take that because, again, I want to brag on Corey. On that last question, you know, Corey was influenced by uh, Elizabeth Elliot, people like that, who, you know, she wrote Passion and Purity. And Corey has always lived her life under the belief that Christ is enough. Christ is enough, whatever your situation. If you don't get married, Christ is enough. If you get married and you you don't have kids or maybe you can't have kids and you're praying for God and God can intervene in that situation. We know a lot of people that God has done miraculous things and he's given them children. But if that's not how it goes, Christ is enough, you know? And I've always really respected Corey for that. That is absolutely her life. When we got married, what we knew we were called to do was play music and share Jesus Christ through that music. And we said, if God wants us to have kids, then we want to have kids, you know? And then at some point, it kind of became evident that Skillet wasn't going to stop. 
Hmm. which we were surprised about. We never thought anybody would like skill at that much. <laughs> right? We were like totally. five or six years at the most. I don't know. That's awesome. And um, eventually, as we started praying about it and God started putting kids in our hearts, it was like, are we going to be able to do this on the road? Yeah. Or, I mean, can we possibly do both of these things? And of course, you have to pray about it. Your yeah. family has to come first. My job as a man is I'm supposed to provide for my family. I'm supposed to protect my family. There's all these things you have to do. But there's this great truth in Scripture, which is part of what grace is. Grace is God empowering you to do and to be who he's called you to be and what he's called you to do. Yeah. So if God calls Preacher. you to do something, mm-hmm. he's going to give you the Holy Spirit power to accomplish that task. Mm-hmm. You don't accomplish it in your own strength or you're going to run into really bad problems because <laughs> right. you ain't going to do a good job. Right, right. Excuse me. Whoa, that's bad. Yeah. But hey. if you do it in the power of the Holy Spirit, then all of a sudden God will do the impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is what we prayed about. We believe God said to keep doing music. I thought it was impossible to have kids on the road and do music. But but God provided a way. And so, you know, you've met my kids, of course. Yeah. Both of our kids love Jesus. They got saved when they were younger. They are filled with the power and the presence of God. They evangelize awesome. to their friends. They say no to the culture. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, that is not because me and Corey are awesome. It's because the power of the Holy Spirit is real. That's and he awesome. will empower everybody watching this podcast just like he empowered us and Sadie and yeah. Elizabeth Elliot. How's Great. that? We'll end rub again. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Go ahead. I Corey. have a couple things to add to that too. Love it. Uh, for us, we said we will never have kids on the road. That's wow. what we said because in our natural wisdom, we were like, it's not fair to them. Yeah. You know, so when that time comes, we'll be done with Skillet or I'll get off the road. Right. And then God started to speak to us. John actually started having dreams that we had a baby. Wow. And I was like, I'm not super excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, as the mom, you know what it's going to mean for you yeah. on the road. And so I'm like, I don't really think I can do that. Yeah. But then as I prayed about it, I began to have faith for it. And I knew that it was the Lord, even though I still wasn't super excited about it, because I did know what it would mean. Yeah. But the great truth of Scripture is that when you are obedient to what God says, His blessing he commands a blessing over you. He, the blessing wow. of God is on you for your obedience. So for us, it was very simple. This is what God's saying to you, regardless of how you feel or what you think it might mean for your kids or what you think it might mean for you. You've got to ask God for faith mm-hmm. to obey what he's asking you to do. It's and good. then his blessing just comes. That's a great word because a lot of people watching are, are really struggling, I'm sure, like everybody. Yeah. They really want the blessing of God. Yeah. And that's the truth. If you want the blessing of God, all you got to do is obey his word. That's if, right. And if you obey his word, nothing on earth can stand against the blessing of God. Cancel culture. You're kidding me. Yeah. Cancel culture cannot stand against the blessing right. of the living God. That's um, right. You losing your job can't stand against it. The people making fun of you online or deplatforming you on your social media. These people can't stand against the, the, the right. commanded blessing of God. Obey the word of God. That's it. Summer is flying by and there are so many fun, exciting things going on here with LO, especially as we prep for LO Sister Conference coming up in August. Not only that, but Honey Girl is on the move. That girl is walking and that girl is talking. Between everything going on with LO and my sweet fam, staying healthy and keeping my energy is huge to me and something that's not always easy to do. Not only is staying healthy huge, but it's also huge for my husband too. Um, I love the taste of AG1, which is great and really works out for Christian and I because the benefits of AG1 one are so great so much so that we have gotten his whole family hooked on it because it's so good for you athletic greens makes health and wellness easy in one tasty scoop of their product ag1 there are 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source ingredients it also includes a multivitamin a multi-mineral a probiotic green superfood blend all in just one daily serving so talk about making it easy really the ingredients in one scoop of ag1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet support energy 
energy and focus, help with your gut health and digestion, and support a healthy immune system. They even make travel packs, which are perfect for keeping up with those healthy habits while you're on the road, which like I said, is not always that easy to do. But make it easy with Athletic Greens, and we're gonna make it super easy for y'all because Athletic Greens is actually gonna give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, just simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. That's right. And I think so many people, you know, get frustrated at God when the blessing doesn't come, but they're not walking in obedience with the Lord. It's like they want to live their lifestyle and be immersed in culture and be all up in the world and do whatever they want and their dreams and their desires. And then they want the blessing of God to follow. But the blessing Mm -hmm. of God comes from walking in obedience with the Lord. It comes in from Mm -hmm. relationship with God. And so that's a great point to make that God's blessing follows your obedience and in his presence even you know when, when you're walking in step with the lord he's he's walking mm-hmm. with you not to say that when you're totally astray he's so far i mean he's there but you feel that tangible presence when you're walking in step with him so that's so good y'all um one thing i want to talk to y'all about is just that idea of being in the world but not of the world and y'all are like if, if you're listening to y'all talk you would think oh, these guys are like super Christians. Like they know the word backwards and forwards. They, you know, sing, uh, yes, Christian rock music, but y'all are not just going to Christian events. Uh, in fact, y'all are, y'all are, in the world y'all are like all all in different spaces that that might seem really dark that are uh, definitely living completely opposite of what the christian lifestyle would look like and y'all are going to those places and performing and so what does it look like what's that balance of being in the world and not of the world and how do you keep your heart pure in such a dark space at times oh that's fantastic i love it i mean the bible says as you know (laughs) <laughs> it's such a scripture we say all the time that we are, well, Christ is the light of the world. Yeah. We are a reflection of Jesus. So we are also the light of the world because we reflect the light of Jesus. That's right. So I believe that we are called to go into the darkness and be unashamed for Jesus. Yeah. We always hear people say, be salt and light. You hear it all the time, be salt and light. But I think that what you... What a lot of times goes along with that, a lot of the people saying we need to be salt and light do not live their lives like salt or light. They're just hanging out in the darkness (laughs) and they're like, I'm being salt and light because I'm hanging out with sinners. That's not exactly, that's not accurate. Mm -hmm. What salt means when Jesus says this is that salt is supposed to purify. You know, you put salt on meat and things like that, especially in the past, to help it help it last so that salt yeah. doesn't putrefy, right? We go into the world and we speak and live in a holy way mm. according to the scriptures. And because of our holiness, the world will see that, that we are not, uh, I guess you would say putrefying, to use that, that yeah. word for the meat. We are not putrefying. We are not decaying in the same way. We are not doing things that lead to harm and death and and X, Y, and Z. As we talk about obedience, the blessing of God. Obeying God is its own blessing because you're not bringing harm upon your own head. So even if God doesn't give you that blessing you're hoping for with money and jobs and husbands and wives and whatever, obeying God is its own blessing because when you obey God, You're not bringing harm on yourself. So we love to go Mm -hmm. play mainstream shows. We're friends with people. A lot of them are atheists. Some of them are anti-Christ consciously, if that makes sense. In other words, Mm -hmm. they know that they are anti-Christ and they will say so. They hate what we believe. But we have meals together. We hang out together. We're friends. And I think that part of the respect on their end is that we don't apologize for what we believe. We just say, hey, this is... This is what our feet are standing upon. We're standing upon something firm, and it's not me. God is behind us. Mm -hmm. That is our backing. Mm -hmm. He's behind us. He's underneath us, holding us up. He is surrounding us, keeping us safe. And that's what that is. And we don't make apologies for that. You want to say anything? Yeah, I I think for us, maybe more on a personal level, because a lot of people wonder, 
how can you go into those kind of places and it not affect you? Mm -hmm. You know, for us, it's kind of like Ecclesiastes perspective, right? Mm -hmm. If I can live my life imagining myself standing before the Lord at the end, Mm -hmm. then a lot of the things that might matter don't really matter anymore, right? Like your friend that hurt you, you're kind of like, oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm standing before a holy God. And wow. my life is right before me, and he's looking at it. So wow. I, we always try to live our lives that way. Yeah. Um, and so the temptations of the world, <clears throat> I think the, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you walk in his ways, the more you forge habits that make you begin to crave more of the fruits of the Spirit in your life, right? Yeah. The closer you walk with him, the more you become like him, yeah. the more you reflect him, the more you desire more of him, the more you desire to reflect him. Good. And for us, we <clears throat> want to bring his kingdom to the world, right? Mm. So his kingdom lives in us. We want to bring that presence to other people that don't know him. That's yeah. what we're called to do. So for us, it's not um, some of the sins that might be tempting for people like, you know, how can you be around X, Y, Z and not want that? Mm. We really just don't want that anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that's good. Yeah. And we've put friends and people in our lives that we're accountable to. So as you walk in the light, as he yeah. is in the light, you know, so That's I always good. want to be everything that I have is in the light. Yeah. Even my junk. I'm like, Lord, can you take care of this terrible attitude that I have? Can you help yeah. me? John, I've got a terrible attitude. Can you help me? He'll be like, just stop having it. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but Good being, advice. being teachable to listen to people. And also for us, we've been committed to church life mm-hmm. because we need church life. Yeah. And we're aware that when you're going into really dark places, you need that um, to help sustain you. That's good. So yeah. we, we have accountability with our leaders as well. So we go into those places and we're like, every place, your footsteps, I've given to you. Yeah. Ooh, be bold. Be courageous. Come on. Y'all are That's awesome. what the Bible says. Love I'll tell this. you that. I love it. Uh, this is like church for real. I love it. This is so, so good. And I love how you said, like, you truly just don't want it anymore. And I was actually thinking about that today um, because I used to be like such a huge coffee drinker. Like, man, I was like the four cups a day type of person. But I'm not just like coffee. I'm like latte. Like, someone go find me a coffee shop. Like, I love, love coffee. Well, then I had like really bad anxiety for for a while. And I went to this doctor about it and was really just talking to him about ways that um, I can help get rid of this anxiety. And it it was a kind of like a more holistic type doctor. He's actually a brain doctor. So he talked to me more about like why I'm having it, some triggers and trauma, stuff like that. Anyways, after talking, he goes, do you drink caffeine? I said, yeah. And he said, you need to stop drinking caffeine. That's going to make you have more anxiety. And I'm thinking, no way. There ain't no way I'm giving up coffee. But I I wanted so badly to not have anxiety. And so I was like, well, I can see how that could be um, causing some. Because he said, if, if you're physically feeling anxious in the sense of like you're shaky your heart's racing because that's what caffeine does to you it'll tell your brain you're anxious even though you're not because you're having a physical reaction that looks like anxiety so anyways i actually quit during caffeine and it was really hard for a little bit because i love the coffee i love the way it tastes i love waking up to a warm cup and all that kind of stuff and i was thinking about this yesterday because all my friends obviously still drink coffee and i don't even want it anymore and now Mm -hmm. it's been two years and i don't even crave it i don't want it it doesn't even sound good to me because i know it's bad for my body and i think it's the same way with sin you know Mm -hmm. there at a time it might sound really good and it feels really good you're how would i ever live without this but when you come into the reality that that is not good for me that's not (laughs) good for my spirit that's not good for my relationship with the lord that's not good for my life and you get rid of it there's gonna be a season and a time that it takes to to fully get that out to fully get that out of you but then you're gonna look back and be like that doesn't even look good anymore. That doesn't even smell mm. good anymore. That doesn't even sound good anymore. And so <laughs> yeah. I, I totally, I totally know what y'all are saying. I think that's really cool. Um, I love how you said when you sit at the table with your friends, there, there's a respect, even though y'all have a difference of opinion, because y'all are so unashamed of the word and you stand so solid on it. Um, John, I know you talk about this a lot in today's culture. There's this watered down gospel message being um, portrayed out there. And I think people and pastors think that's like a safe way to go because you don't want to offend anyone. But you talk about the dangers of watering 
even a, a little bit of scripture. So speak into that a little bit about why it's so important to stand on the word and not be a half in, half out believer. Memorizing scripture is something that is so important to me and something echoed throughout the whole Bible. It's so important that we fill our minds with scripture and it is actually so easy nowadays to memorize scripture, especially when it comes to dwell, which is a great way to learn scripture. Y'all just imagine if we had more of God's word memorized. That would be absolutely incredible. And you know how it is. You know, you hear other people quote scripture and you're like, I wish I knew it like that. But you have to put forth effort to learn it. Um, So I get it. I remember thinking that as well. And I know some of you are thinking that it is hard. You're like, how is this going to make it any easier? But Dwell has got you covered and they make it super fun. Like for instance, these cute little tattoos. Check it out. This is a Dwell tattoo I'm wearing. Dwell is a company that helps you memorize one Bible verse scripture each month. And memorizing scripture is such a powerful tool because what comes in will come out. Dwell is a monthly membership that sends you a kit in the mail with temporary tattoos, tags for your keychain, or just a printout of a verse. Not only is it a really cool and easy way to memorize scripture, but it is a great way to start conversations. And what is better than getting to talk about God's word? But I know I lost some of you when I said temporary tattoo, but seriously, Dwell is for everyone interested in memorizing scripture. Dwell has over 2,500 five-star reviews and has helped people memorize over 400,000 verses. Whoa, that's crazy. Guys, this is actually so powerful. I hope you check it out at dwelldifferently.com. You'll be amazed at how God can use just one Bible verse to change everything. So to show you how awesome it is, we've arranged with Dwell to give you your first month for free with the code Sadie. That's a pretty sweet deal, huh? First month free. That's dwelldifferently.com for a limited time only. So use the code Sadie to get your first month absolutely free. Absolutely. I'd, you know, I'd love to. You know, I want to say something. I hope there's some guys listening because I got something to say to these, these dudes, say all it. you men out there. And I hope that girls hear it, women hear it, especially women who aren't married. And I want them to say, I deserve a Christian man that agrees with this. Because a lot of people, uh, men and women, will not say what I'm about to say. We need men who understand that there are things that God loves and there are things that God hates. Hmm. Christians are uncomfortable with the idea that God hates anything. Mm -hmm. And I really don't understand because the Bible's full of <laughs> scriptures where God says, I yeah. hate this. Yeah. I hate it. It's evil. I hate it. It's an abomination. It, 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 it makes me sick. It makes me want to vomit you out. There's all sorts of scriptures about these kind of things. What we're really seeing right now in society, and my, one of the things we're seeing, is a confusion about what freedom is. Yeah. And here's what I want to say. The secular world thinks that freedom namely sexual freedom, is basically the freedom to do anything that I want to do. It's liberation. Liberation is whatever I feel I should be able to do it. I'm free to do it. Christian freedom, which is true freedom, does not agree with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want sexual freedom. We want freedom from sexual slavery. Yeah. Freedom in the Bible says that if you obey what God says, you're going to experience liberty. And if you don't obey what the Bible says, you are going to live in slavery to sin. So when we're hanging out with friends at table, at the table that don't agree with us, part of the respect is that there is something beautiful to people who are in slavery saying, how come you're not in slavery? How come you, you, you can live without watching pornography? How is that even possible? You can live without cheating on your spouse. You can live without this and this and this. How do you possibly do that? Mm -hmm. That's where the gospel of Jesus Christ comes in. Yeah. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus, made it possible for me and you to be freed from the power of sin and death. Yeah. So if we have a gospel that is watered down, that is nothing more than that there is a transcendent God out there that loves everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no power in that gospel. Th yeah. That's just some sort of faith belief that there's a God that made stuff. It's the power of the gospel that sets you free from sin and death. Yeah. So if we believe in a God who just exists, but we're still slaves to sin 
and we're slaves to death. Well, that's not actually good news. Yeah. The good news of the gospel begins with this. You are separated from God in sin, but Jesus made a way to, for that to change. Yeah. The danger for the church today is that we are um, not only apologetic for the Bible, we are apologetic about who Jesus is. Mm. We think he's mean. We think that he doesn't like some kinds of people. We don't think you would ever hate anybody, hate anything that somebody does. Right. And the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible is a very different picture. And if you look at the church, you see there's no power in the church right now. Well, there's a reason. It's because we have given in on everything. You can hardly yeah. even find any preachers these days that will even speak against sexual immorality. When in reality, the Bible ties the fall of civilizations into sexual immorality. Wow. It's the fall of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's what we wow. learn in Romans 1.1. 1, 1. I mean, look at the first chapter of Romans and you will, you will see the fall of a civilization. The judgment of God is tied normally, namely, to pure, unadulterated sexual freedom. So I'm just throwing that out there. Men, wow. we've got to do something about the, the pornography in our generation, the pornography that we allow into the church. We need to call it what it is. It's something God hates. And yeah. now if you are a Christian and you are addicted to pornography, God has grace for you, but you are living as if you're powerless and you yeah. are not powerless. Mm -hmm. Christ has set you free from that. Right. So live consistently with who God says that you are. That's my encouragement to you. That's a very encouraging and something I think we all need to hear and be reminded of. And thank you for just reminding us of what the word says, you know, and, and that it's not because of, it's not out of hate and it's not out of shame. It's out of love and it's out of true freedom, um, setting you truly free of the bondage of sin and death. Um, and so what a great reminder. Um, I was listening to a sermon yesterday. We we're talking about how like shame is never, ever the way to get someone to stop living a certain way. And the gospel is actually the opposite of shame. But sometimes the church speaks in shame, and that's why people get turned off to the message of Jesus. But Jesus, although, yes, God clearly hates things, he also, it's because he fiercely loves you and wants freedom for your life. And so I love that you just laid that out. Um, I want to ask you, Corey, just raising a family, like you said, you're a a little bit nervous to have kids at first, and then you prayed through it. And and here you are with two uh, beautiful kids who are, like you said, are just um, preaching the gospel and filled with the Spirit. So many people nowadays are scared to have kids, especially Christians, because they're like, oh, it's just so dark, and the world's so dark, and I don't want to have kids, because how, how are you going to raise kids in this age? And people ask me all the time, like, are you scared that honey's born into such a dark time? Are you scared that honey's... And I'm, in my perspective, I'm like, I'm so glad she's born for such a time as this, mm. because she is a light of Jesus within her. She's a spirit of God within her. We're going to pray mm. over her life that she would be an ambassador for Christ and, and do something good for the world. And that's the perspective I have, and I'm sure yours is something similar, but how do you have... Mm. How do you have the faith in your kids' faith, you know? Because I think so many moms would want to shield them from seeing um, some of the, like you said, you go into those mainstream places, you have these atheist friends. So many moms might be like, oh, I don't want them to hear a different perspective, blah, blah, blah. But it's like y'all trust your kids' faith. How do you get to the point where, one, you're like willing to have kids during this time, and two, willing to let your kids see things and experience things that um, are dark? Right. Well, I, I, what comes to mind firstly is um, the story of Gideon <clears throat> and how, you know, God called him and told him who he was. And then he had a bunch of people, thousands and thousands of people with him to go attack, you know, the enemy. And God's like, no, you have too many. Mm. And then he weans him down to like 300. Right. So yeah. it, it's never really about numbers. It, it's about if God is with you, you can you know, send 10,000 to flight, you yeah. know, like it, it's not really it's about the darkness and the power of darkness. It's about the power of God. It's good. Right. So he yeah. really just needs one that believes it's him. Great. So uh, there's that. Um, it's great. But it is an unnerving time. Mm. And I do think like you're entrusted with a little life, right, which is a blessing. Scripture calls children a blessing from God. 
And when you're really blessed, you have lots of kids. So even though that's not necessarily our cultural perspective, it is something that I find fascinating because it isn't necessarily my natural perspective. So I realize I'm kind of influenced somewhat by culture. <clears throat> and you can look at the women who were barren and how they just sought the Lord, crying and crying and crying to have a kid because for them that was <clears throat> excuse, excuse me, a sign of the blessing of the Lord to them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's his fruit. It's his blessing. So I do want to see kids as that, the blessing from God. It's a miracle. And the fact that he entrusts a life to you is amazing. Right. If he entrusts a life to you, you as a parent are responsible for that life. And right. that also can be scary. Yeah. But when you have God on your side, right, you, you are instructed to raise your children in God's ways, mm -hmm. right? So you have the blessing and the power of God with you, the protection of God with you, who is the omnipotent, omniscient, all wise creator. He is with you in this life, helping you shape and form their minds. Mm -hmm. And he, one thing that has always helped me is because as a parent, you can be anxious about, okay, will they, can I get them to know God? Right. Will they choose him? Because they have a free will, you know, and that would be to me just the hardest thing to deal with a, a child who doesn't love the Lord. So in all the phases of life, baby phase, I'm like, I want my kids to get out with God. I'm not going to wait. Like, God doesn't wait for you to be smart enough or old enough right. to understand his ways because you'll never really fully understand him, which is kind of awesome. Yeah. Because you, you're never going to get bored, right? Yeah, so that's true. we know what the love of God is, but there are depths and depths and depths and depths of the love of God that we will never grasp. Yeah. And we will continue to swim in that ocean of how deep that is. That's right. right. Yep. So it's not because you're smart enough or developed enough that God can can begin to touch you and you to understand who he is. So my kids, even as babies, I'm going to get them as much in the presence of God as I can, reading scripture to them, you know. And so and when they would, let's say, experience a time in the presence of God that felt maybe a little bit more anointed than the others, tangible presence, there was always a response, even from them as little babies. I'm like, I'm going to keep them in here as much as I can. And I will instruct them in the ways. So as they get a little bit older, That's like cool. John and I would have worship times with our kids at two, three, four, or five years old. Cool. And, you know, their attention span isn't long enough, but there are certain things we'd put in play so that they would understand to fear the Lord, cool. to understand his ways, give examples about how, to my daughter, Alex, you love your Care Bears so much. This is how much God loves you. That's Little cool. silly examples that yeah. are simple, but so that they can begin to understand. to understand him enough to relate to him. That's cool. Right? So, and if your kids taste the Lord enough and you follow the leading of the Spirit and the word of the Lord in the raising of them, you do not need to be afraid. That's good. Because he is powerful enough and he loves them more than you do. Yeah. So, no matter what your capacity is to teach or yeah. whatever you can do, he cares for them more than you do. Yeah. So my one of my biggest battles was always having faith in my heart. When I realized I was anxious, and then you kind of move into like a controlling zone or your own strength zone. Right. I'm like, okay, this isn't actually a good zone. Yeah. I need to hold my kids openly before the Lord. Yeah. Get them in his presence as much as I can. Teach them his ways as much as I can. Get them to be memorizing scripture as much as I can. But pray that he meets them right. in a way that they can understand. And both of my kids fairly early on really tasted the presence of the Lord in different ways because kids are different. Right. That's but awesome. But I can tell you they won't walk away from him because they've tasted enough of him. Yeah. They've foundation enough in him. Awesome. That that's who they live for. That's awesome. Come on. That's great parenting so. advice. So for every mom out there who uh, I know is listening because I have a lot of young mom audience, if, if you've been afraid for your kids and what they're growing into, um, you can take tangible steps today to help them understand the great love of God, no matter if they're, like she said, if they're two, if they're five, six, seven, whatever it is, like start um, helping explain to them how much God loves them. Um, what great advice. Uh, I got to ask y'all about this new album, Dominion, uh, already doing incredible and so many great songs. I read that this was the fastest album that y'all have ever written. Is this, is this true and why so? <laughs> it is true. Yeah, usually we, we, we write like 60 songs and it's three wow. years, you know. I think it was probably to do with the the times, you know. I mean, the times are so insane. Every day, 
is is a brand new drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. True. So it kind of makes it feel like it used to be you'd have a few dramas in the year. Now it's every week. There's a brand new thing to deal with. And I think it was that these songs just started coming out of us, you know. And, and in fact, the, the message of the record, which is the title track, Dominion, ties into what Corey was kind of just saying, mm-hmm. which is the question. What about for, for people that, how am I going to have a kid right now? This world is just absolutely crazy. I mean, I feel you, but we need a reminder to the church that the devil does not own the world Right. Sin doesn't own the world. That's right. You know, big media and big tech, they don't own the world. Jesus Christ owns the world. He is ruling That's the right. earth. Uh, the Bible says he's ruling in the midst of his enemies. They're still enemies. Yeah. But Christ is ruling o- o- over them right now, right? You yeah. know, so, so the earth doesn't belong to the devil. Yep. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the Bible says. So, so this is a message of victory. Yeah. And I think that that's something we should we should keep telling Christians is that the gospel is a gospel of victory. Yeah. You know, there's a uh, theologian called Joseph Boot. He wrote a book called Mission of God. Everybody should get it. One of my favorite hmm. books I've ever read. It only came out about four years ago. Wow. But he always says, hey, the, the world is not post-Christian. He says the, the whole world is pre-Christian. <laughs> and I, I always like that. He said, no, no, no. The world belongs to God. And I always kind of quite like that, to be honest. But Dominion <laughs> is, is a reminder to people that this earth uh, belongs to God. And it's based on this verse. says, his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom one that shall not pass away. It's awesome. This belongs to Christ. Let's celebrate that. So we don't need to be afraid. There's a lot to be uh, frightened about, yeah. but but not in a way that takes over your life. There's a right. lot to, to do. Yeah. And we may suffer. I think we're probably going to suffer. Some of people watching may have already suffered a little bit. I know people that have lost their jobs. A friend of ours from church just lost his job due to um, transgender ideology coming into the business. He just said, hey, I can't do that. And wow. said, then you got to leave. Wow. He's got four kids. He's been there for 20 years. Wow. Um, th- people are losing their jobs. I'm not saying there's nothing to, to be frightened about, but there's nothing to, to there's nothing that can overpower yep. Christ. So you're going to make it. So mom's out there with your kids. You're going to make it. I'll give you one last verse that I love that we all know. The gates of hell shall not prevail against yes. uh, the kingdom of God, right? I just want to say one thing. I was reading a book by the theologian James White, and he was talking about that scripture in the original languages, which I cannot speak because I'm not near smart enough. But the point is this. Mm-hmm. Most of us, when we heard that scripture, we always think of the kingdom of God being static and the powers of hell coming against the kingdom of God right. and saying, don't worry, they, they can't break through. Yeah. But in the original language, what we actually see is that it's the gates of hell that are standing still, and it is the kingdom of God that is advancing against the kingdom of darkness, overpowering the kingdom of darkness, and those gates will not prevail against the ever-expanding kingdom of God as the word of God is preached, as people are set free from the power of sin and death. And as, you know, the the kingdom of God starts like a little seed, Mm. and then it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and his kingdom, the Bible says is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when the people of God and mom's out there with your kids and dad's trying to work, hoping they don't lose their jobs, when we live this life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, it splashes out on the people around you. Those people, they're not in the pool yet, but they're standing by the pool and they're getting this splash 100 degrees outside and they're getting splashed with something to say, I really like that. What's that all about? Yeah. That's the kingdom of God. And you know you want to jump in, baby. It's awesome. <laughs> you know you want to jump in. It's so good. <laughs> y'all, I love it. I'm so grateful for y'all that y'all are unashamed of the gospel, that you are unwilling to water down the word of God, which is the truth that we stand on. And I am so thankful for y'all's voice and y'all's impact on the world and the impact that you've had on your family. I honestly am learning so much. Um, 
just from this conversation, as I learned so much years ago on a bus after high school. I'm just so grateful for all that y'all do. And thank you for being on the podcast. For all of you listening, go listen to their latest album, Dominion. Go see them on the road. Go get the books. Listen to their podcast. Obviously, these people have a lot of what well, that's good advice to give. And just so thankful to know you guys. Thanks for being on. Thank you, Sadie. Sadie. It's so good seeing you and keep doing what you're doing. Do not stop. I do want to show people two things really quickly, if I may. Please do. This is my book. Look how beautiful this book is. (laughs) It's called Awaken Alive to Truth. You can get it on Amazon, Audible, if you want to hear my beautiful, raspy voice read (laughs) the book to you. So here it is there now. Look, it's not quite as beautiful as this book. But it's close, you see. (laughs) I mean, I can't compete with Sadie in in terms of of, of beauty. But still, it's pretty good. That's awesome. Y'all are awesome. I love you guys. Well, yes, definitely go get the book. And I appreciate it so much. Y'all have a fantastic day.